Because I could not get webcams working, so apologies to <laughs> people viewing this on uh, Twitch and Hello and welcome to NoCB, a Grand Strategy Podcast. This is for the week of the 9th of February, 2002. Uh, I am Len, I am your host. I am here uh, with our friends Rose. Hey there. And Lambert. Hello there. Uh, Loris is chasing horses again. Uh, he won't be here. We'll probably be here next week when we're going to probably talk about Warhammer 3 the episode. And, and I will likely make <laughs> that's, myself that's absent perfect. because I have never played Warhammer. Didn't you? Didn't, uh, you did Total War, was it Three Kingdoms? I did play, like, one stream okay. of it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's... For, it was for a charity stream. It's, uh, yeah. it's definitely a different kind. Um, yeah. And Three Kingdoms is the only modern Total War game that I have not played. That's right. Mm -hmm. It was good. I just can't quite get into the way, like, having the separate battles and stuff. It's never been a thing I've really liked. Like, I, I even have that struggle with, like, Age of Wonders. Interesting. Yeah. Mm. It's, uh, yeah, I mean, I think I won't go off on, like, a big war here. But our main <laughs> topic, our main topic today, uh, is of course going to be the K three Royal Court because we have all played it, and uh, yes, it's I'm out. excited to talk about it. So we're not finally, <laughs> we're finally embargo. I think Rose has been I, under embargo. I quite like it. Oh, yeah. I can neither I... confirm nor deny that. <laughs> <laughs> See, I quite like CK three. I like the DLC, but I am. Very convinced that I'm the person who likes it the least in this podcast right now, purely based on who I'm with. Yeah, I probably. Mean, that's probably true. Um, but yeah, before we get to that, we are going to look at some news. And my browser share broke when I was testing it, and <laughs> right now. Um, um... Wow, well, that's great. Uh, yeah. That's very helpful, and it's it's a beautiful black screen. I love it. Hey, we got it now. There we go. Okay, cool. Um, now it did that thing. Hey, I don't wow. think it needs your cursor. In fairness, that that'd be okay. Well, like I can't see. Um, <laughs> oh no, that's I don't know how that happens. Then. No, that's it's just completely thing that. Hosting the show. I think that I'm a boomer with how much technology hates me specifically. <laughs> uh, yeah, Victoria 3. Uh, we got a dev diary about journal entries, which are their new way of presenting content. And that's not what. Okay. <laughs> I can't see my mouse, so I am flying by the seat of my pants right now. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Lambert, uh, what is, uh, what, what are, what are journals? It's another one of those new innovations that they're putting into Victoria 3, um, but a good one. Um, and yeah, I, I'm quite excited to see where this one goes because basically it's like, They've taken mission trees and they've taken focus trees and they've taken decisions and taken events and they've kind of melded it all into this journal entry system um, where you will have, say, you can see on the image here uh, when you look at the one for you know Istanbul, it's like you've got a journal entry called the Sick Man of Europe and it'll tick up uh, from you know various things happening. And then if it goes to 100%, then you get uh, events happen based on you being the sick man of Europe. Or you could um, have it not uh, tick up fast. Uh, you can have it time out and then you'll get a different um, kind of set of events. And it's, 
It's just basically the, a new, more dynamic way of doing mission trees, it kind of seems. Um, and it's quite interesting as well, because in the comments they also say that um, two nations can share a journal entry. Um, so, say you had some disaster that was forming for more than one country at the same time, um, you could both have it, say... Um, Oh, I can't remember the exact name of the the thing, but you know when the, when everyone started rebelling in 1848, like there's a name for it, and I'm blanking on it. The revolutions uh, but, of 1848. Yeah, some, <laughs> yeah, that that one. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's you what. could have multiple countries <laughs> having ah shit, everyone's really fucking upset. Journal entry <laughs> ticking up, um, and it's it's looks like one of those innovative new systems that has a lot of potential. I love that it's when when the uh, the sick man of Europe gets to 100% triggers the event the dead man of Europe. That's, that's <laughs> okay. I like that. Yeah. Um I'm curious if there'll be like a a strategy with the Ottomans where you can kind of lean into breaking up the empire and just making like really like progressive modern Turkey if that will Postmodern Turkey, but yeah, I mean yeah. that would be. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I know one of the one of the first runs I want to do is I want to start as as Austria Hungary and then purposefully make like uh, Bohemia or or Czechia break off as a... uh, those kind of runs. I, I I honestly have no idea who I'd play for my first run. It's pro honestly, it's probably gonna be Prussia. Yeah. Because yeah. like they've got a very very uh deterministic route forward. You know what you're going to be doing. You know that it's gonna involve some diplomacy and some warfare. Um you you know, it's 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 something where it does what it says on the tin for a first run. I think that's pretty useful. Um Easy to compare to Victoria 2 as well. So, uh, but after that, no idea. I know my first, the first thing I'm going to try is anarchist Switzerland. Like, let's just blow up all the tunnels and have anarchism. <laughs> uh, but that'll probably be like my review run. So, like, the first run I actually did not. Testing purposes, I don't know. Uh, but I'd love to try. Uh, Obviously, I'll try the US and try to take. Yeah. Um, also, I like that they have like some littler historical events. Like here, we have the Great Millennium Flood. Uh, exactly what it sounds like. <laughs> if you haven't heard of it, uh, is I, I will say uh, the most of the world doesn't know what a molasses is. Really? Not a clue. It's like a byproduct of making sugar. It's like this. So, you know how we have brown sugar and white sugar? Yeah. So, basically, molasses comes from when you make white sugar, you're taking the except basically it's the molasses, the syrupy part in the sugar that turns it brown. See, it is the easiest to... way to explain yeah. it. It's, yeah. If if it's we were in a pub quiz and it was a question what is a molasses? Or what is molasses? Or I don't even know what. Yeah, it, it's molasses. It it's, yeah. does not use I a preposition. I would have guessed the, the organic um, freaking crunchy shit that attaches itself to the bottom of boats. Oh. <laughs> barnacles? Yeah, yeah. I would, have, I, yeah. I, would, I would legit get it mixed up with barnacles. It's, it's like. Yeah, molasses is like a thick, like picture maple syrup. But ten times thicker. Yeah, it's like horrible to work cool. with. Like if it gets on your clothes and dries, it's like really hard to get out. Also, yeah, uh, I guess it's similar to treacle. A lot of uh, a lot of rum is actually acid, mm -hmm. unless it says like. I well, I think dark juice. rum. Dark rum's made with it, and I don't know that the clear rum is. Yeah, kind of like I know some rum gets its color from like barrel aging, and some gets it from the actual materials that go into it. So. It's Mm -hmm. on. But it's very good on American style biscuits. <laughs> yeah, yep, yeah, that's true. Are they just like 
for, for someone who's never had an American style biscuit. So picture is it basically a, a scone. It's very similar to yeah. a scone, except it doesn't have any sweetener in it like a scone does. A then, you know, how a scone has a little bit of sweetness. And they tend to be but, like yeah, kind yeah. of they tend to be kind of like flakier and crumblier. They have like layers, to, like mm. you can peel them apart vertically into these little like. Well, that's of... only some of them. Yeah, yeah, I guess it depends. There's there's the country out. style, and then there's the the flaky style. Which that's if you're true. making them from homemade, the flaky style is more. I'm sorry, the country style is more easier. Um, but yeah, it. Yeah, we're back two seconds. Okay. <laughs> Biscuits, uh, American biscuits are good, and yeah. it, it basically thinks of how they made hardtack or similar, you know, biscuits for the sea, but then picture, picture the fact that they didn't have to make it stay forever on a ship, right, so they right. added a little bit more to it, but it still doesn't have anything in it besides, like, a little bit of salt, I think, for flavoring. Right. Yeah, um... Yeah. Yeah, you don't want it flooding down your streets. No, you, you really no. don't. Like people actually yeah. don't. Um, you, the other <laughs> yeah. thing you don't, you don't. The other thing you really don't want flooding down your streets, though, is uh, Europeans. Um, <laughs> I mean, especially if <laughs> they're European. I am very in favor of the right to protest, including <laughs> inside European countries. Uh, well, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking more of uh of the decentralized nations of the world in Victoria Three. Got, uh, Dev Diary on uh, how colonization is going to work, which has been like one of the big unanswered questions um, so far. Did you do a video on this as well, Lambert? I haven't checked. I did. Yeah. yeah. My my main takeaway from the start of it was, um, I'm I'm really unhappy that pith helmets have such a, a horrible like connotation right now because they look fucking dope. Um, they are they are cool cool looking. Yeah. The the aesthetic of most really, you know, bad things, like the aesthetics of them are pretty cool most of the time. It's like colonial outfits, they look pretty cool. Horrible connotations. But they yeah. look awesome. Yeah. Um I mean you can go to the extreme as well. Like some of those Nazi uniforms did look pretty dope. Shit people inside them, but the the cloth they had, themselves uh, <laughs> they, they had a they had a sense of aesthetics, that's true. Yeah. Um, that is that is they had a sense of style, yeah. but yeah, no, the, the colon, colonialization, right? It's it's a shitty thing. Probably shouldn't do it. But if you're playing Vicky Three, totally you should do it because. Um, I mean, it's like EU Four. You need colonization. Yeah. Precisely. Yeah. IRL not great playing in the game. Yes, great. Same for yeah. like CK Three and Incest. You yeah. know. Yeah. Um, Basically, the way that colonization works in Vicky 3 is using, uh, like, the interest system. Uh, you declare an interest in um, a, a region, and then you will basically establish a colonial outpost in that region. And uh, the longer it stays there, the, the more uh, of the region you will end up, like, subsuming into your colony. Uh, but people who live there, because unlike... Vicky Three, um, people who live there actually give a shit. Uh, <laughs> they will, they will not be happy about it, and they may uh, rebel against you. Uh, and you know, it may start a um, a diplomatic incident where other people who have uh, declared an interest in the region, or such as the people who live there, not just the country that you're colonizing, may get involved. So you could end up with um, if you are really not kind to the people you're colonizing. Uh, quite a, a rough rebellion on your hands. Yeah, I really like two things about it. One being that um, it actually creates a diplomatic incident, which kind of gives the decentralized nation sort of a chance because, you know, you could potentially get a great power to back, you know, your your dependents. Cool. It adds more option for them which obviously we won't be able to play as decentralized countries uh, at the beginning of the year but i could also see that being relevant playable country and then also the fact that you have to colonize in a place where you have a declared interest i really like because it yeah. kind of forces you to pick you know pick a couple places that you're going to colonize instead of just like putting colonies down everywhere 
um, which also they mentioned is not efficient because eventually uh, your outgoing colonial population will be split evenly between all of your currently growing colonies and yeah. have too many eventually it'll be you're not using I'll, you're not they're not going to grow fast enough because you needed your ability to like send people build cabins or um, like not enough butter <laughs> spread over too much bread yeah exactly <laughs> thank you Bilbo. um uh, another thing i quite like about it is it makes an active distinction mm -hmm. between the different types of colonies as well um like for your colonial laws you've got like Colonial resettlement, which is the kind of colony that we had in what would now be called like the Anglosphere countries, mm -hmm. um, Australia, New Zealand, um, America, even where it's like instead of it being a we're just going to exploit it, take all the resources out, and just like fuck the people who live there, who cares? It's we're going to put our own people here and live here, and we're going to make it into like a place that is desirable to live in um, versus colonial exploitation, which is you've got shit. Now it's ours. Yeah. Yeah. Like uh, what was done in more uh, parts of Asia. Yes. And the, the, a lot of the Spanish and, and uh, Portuguese. Mm -hmm. Majority of them. Yeah. We're just going to send over enough people to get as much labor out. Yep. Yeah. And if there was intermingling, it was typically men with local ladies. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. That yeah, no, that's did happen. Um, very gentle way of putting it, yeah. Yeah, so it, yeah. if you do colonial exploitation, um, it actually generate tension with the natives faster, so they might trigger a diplomatic play against you faster. It also reduces the standard of living in that state, because obviously you're not, you know, building sewers and stuff you're just trying to get as much sugar as you can or whatever um <laughs> and uh that resettlement gives you it's which somewhat controversially they have done away with the distinction between unincorporated and colonials they're all considered sort of the same thing now so like if you're russia and you decide to make a colony in West Africa, your Siberian provinces will be treated exactly the same. Your unincorporated Siberian well, provinces. Well, not necessarily, because if you have a colony set up and it would be a unincorporated state, um, it turns into, uh, or it would it would turn from a colonial state into an unincorporated state if it has a direct connection to your capital. So there is there is a distinction there, because I'm. Well, if I can find where it says it in here as well, that would be handy. I think Martin clarified that they've gotten rid of that. Oh, did they? Oh. Yeah, because um, he, said, he said something along the lines of the way it used to work is exactly what it says in the dev diary, but since then we've just merged incorporated stuff. And they're all just called. Oh, yeah, I'm reading that here. Again, that might not be what actually happens launch but that is how it works the most recent um so yeah uh i like this a lot better than you know war's colonization system like mm -hmm. one of my least favorite remaining <laughs> parts of eve um hey i like it more than yeah. uh expel minorities yeah i like <laughs> that, that it's, it's fucking terrible i like the disease actually plays a role that you're actually going to have to research like uh Winning and malaria medication to colonize certain parts of the world um, successfully. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I did throw these teasers back in here. Yep, teaser. We'll have time because we're covering two weeks. We apologize for last week, folks. There were black holes and runaway was, horses, and basically, if 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 two of us have something come that comes up, we can still do a show with. Three people, or with two people, but three of us <laughs> had something yeah. come up at this on the same day at the same time, and so it was like, yeah. and I really don't want to host a show by myself. No, yeah, I didn't want to just make Rose monologue. I guess we could have like. I'm pressed. pretty sure it's not classified as a podcast if it's only one person. Then it's just a stream. 
It's just yeah, someone talking. I guess. True. Yeah. Um, I think a podcast requires more. Yeah, so this is a very good change. Um, they've split up unrecognized powers into unrecognized major, uh, minor, and insignificant powers. So, like, Ching isn't automatically locked to being, like, the 83rd place country just because they're unrecognized. <laughs> they just can't surpass any of the recognized great powers unless they become recognized. I like a lot better. Yeah. Sure. Also, I think it'll also help the AI kind of determine who they're dealing with, right? Because if they had it, oh, I'm I'm rank twenty one. I'm I'm not exactly anything special, but I'm rank twenty one. I'm clearly better than rank freaking eighty four Ching over here. But now, if they've split it uh, into like the different types of unrecognized nations, then this rank twenty one is like. Well, first of all, all, they're now rank 22 at the most. Um, and they're looking at Shang's like, oh, he's rank 14. I bet even though he's unrecognized, you know, we, we gotta, we gotta tread a little bit more carefully here. These are, uh, these are placeholder portraits, by the way. Uh, you're not gonna have uh, a coal miner from West Virginia as the. No, it's Tom Cruise. <laughs> uh, that's, that's, <laughs> uh, last samurai sequel, uh, is, uh, you know, the, the last Qing emperor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, by the way, I mean, this is historically accurate, but the Qing have two primary cultures, Manchu and Chu. I think if they get two, we should be able to have two. We should be able to pick a second one. We get them to a certain level of It's not fair that they get two and everyone else can't change theirs at all. So. Wouldn't Americans have, um, oh, what is it, Dixie and Yankee? That's what they were called in, in Victoria, too, and I think they're. Yeah. All that in Victoria. Um, I posted a whole thing on the forums about why I think Western, like Western American, should be a culture, but that'll actually. Happen. My my frontier bias showing. <laughs> I think especially in the in the eighteen hundreds, the the West of like. It's not really a frontier bias. I mean, yeah. the culture was quite different. They had, people had quite different needs and expectations and desires. Right, right. Compared to those back on the plantations and farms of the south, and then the farms and the factories of the north. Right. Yeah, I could even see Midwestern being its own culture, but then we're getting down to, like, really nitty gritty. Yeah, I, I would leave it at <laughs> Dixie Yankee and just Western for Vicky Two era. Right. Yeah, I think it would make sense. Uh, the other little teaser we got was uh, New Zealand, which is a very interesting setup here because it looks like we have a British colony and then we have a playable native tag called the United Tribes and then two uh, decentralized countries on the South Island, I think, unless I'm pretty sure those are both non-playable. On the map color. Yeah. Um, you know what I just, I just thought? Is there not going to be any white colored nations that are playable purely because you'd mix them up for a decentralized power? I think they would. Austria Hungary, you're not allowed to be white anymore. <laughs> I think, uh, we'll... uh, yeah, I think that would make sense. Well, then, uh, hang on. I just, Austria-Hungary, you're not allowed to be playable because you're now a decentralized power. <laughs> Austria-Hungary, the most decentralized of all of the major powers. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they, they were pretty disorganized in the First World War. You would have thought that they were a decentralized country. Uh, how badly they bungled that. Yeah. Um... So yeah, that's uh there was also a little thing about I think Paraguay, um, but I didn't see anything in there that was really left that one off the list. Um we also got a an EU4 dev diary that is uh showing they're introducing a Chinese kingdom government type. Um or if China breaks up where they will not form like an alliance of regional Chinese warlords where none of them really care about reuniting China. <laughs> which is good. 
Um, and uh, everyone gets access to by trying to cast a spelly. You know, I like I like playing as Chinese warlords. And uh, yeah, that's that's pretty. Oh yeah, they they also changed uh, the Gyeongbok Palace in Korea had different modifiers. Don't remember what they were. Gyeongbok. I've been there. It yeah. actually got all torn down by the Japanese, and then the Korean government's been slowly rebuilding it stone by stone. Wow. Yeah. Um, so you walk in, everything looks like brand new because it is <laughs> using old plans and images and everything they had. Oh, and uh, the Korean AI should no longer want to conquer all of Manchuria. They should be more likely to just build up what they have. Um, oh, and they're finally fixing centralized state. This is actually probably the coolest thing in Dev Diary. Uh, where I might actually use that button now that it's supposed to. Uh, yeah, the rest of this was kind of about script debt, which I also didn't put in the scripting Dev Diary for Stellaris. Maybe some of you understood what that meant, but to me it doesn't mean much, because I don't know that much about modding. Um, people who like modding and no modding, here's stuff for you. Um, <laughs> that's basically it. That's all I got for you. Uh, but before we head up Stellaris, let's uh, let's hear from our friend Arheo, friend of the show. Um, and uh, he's published a roadmap for uh, Hearts of Iron 4. Um... <laughs> One thing that uh, he mentioned that I'm fairly excited about is adding more immersion and role-playing elements, which he played the Imperator patches he worked on. That makes a lot. That's not surprising that he would want to focus on that. Um, you know, you know. I think the thing that Hoi4 needs very, very much no more of is people role-playing uh, in certain <laughs> countries. Uh, the, the, the laughing is is a little bit, you know. I, I'm uh, just, I'm not saying every Hoi Four player is, it's, but it's, it's, it's a significant amount of laughing that should just not be. Mm, no, no, and less of that actually. Not not more, or less. Less is good. Uh, yeah. So these are these are going to be optional tools um, for increasing your attachment to a campaign bringing the simulation to life which i really like i mean it is a war game at heart i don't think it's ever going to be like victoria but or ck3 uh, right exactly um he said he doesn't see ever making the economic loop a major part of hoi 4 but there are elements of it that could be um done better and uh then some other stuff that's kind of been on the on the radar for a while, like Wonderwaffen, weird stuff that didn't work or didn't ever actually get made in real life, which is always fun to play around with. Um, Italy. <laughs> Everybody who's been asking for an Italy update, they're planning on doing that. Well, always... The fact that if you're playing multiplayer in Hoi 4 and someone allies Ethiopia or, you know, intervenes or whatever and goes and stops you from winning as Italy... You're screwed. You can't do anything with your focus tree. Right, right. <laughs> like... I also I also like the the differences between sub ideologies and government forms. It's weird to me that like Kaiserreich has had like twelve ideologies for years now. The base game still only technically has four. I mean they kind of use unaligned to represent a lot of different stuff from like anarchism to monar <laughs> monarchism, which doesn't make a lot of sense. Yeah, I'd like to see. I, mean, I guess it's just unaligned with these specific right. ideologies. Right. Like, um, yeah, so sounds like cool stuff. We, we love what he did with Imperator, so look forward to seeing what he does with Hearts of Iron. Um, and uh, then before we get to our main topic, this Laris Dev Diary about improving the basically is changing. I have not read. 
<laughs> One thing that's changing is how uh, pops are read to calculate where they should work. Right. Instead of it, yeah, instead of it being done for every individual pop, it's being done for the whole species that's the same. Which I would assume will streamline some things and make it a little easier on your computer. Yeah, I would, I would hope nice. it'll help with late game performance. That is, it's definitely not as much of an issue as it has been at certain points in Stellaris's life cycle, but it is, it is still a little bit of an issue. Um, yeah, it's it's not there yet, but right. it's uh, it's certainly improved. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, and uh, yeah, some some improvements to like how AI the AI makes economic uh, competitive better about choosing and their alloys on they're not going to go building defensive platforms all over the place if they aren't even at their fleet cap um which, i mean i do that some but <laughs> that's probably not an optimal strategy. uh i mean if you don't want to mess with the fleet cap we could just go to a game that it doesn't even have fleets right well yeah or it can, yeah it, it has boats that you can turn into turn into a boat <laughs> can't actually fight when you're a boat. Right. Well, well, that's because you've pretty much just stolen every little fishing and merchant ship along the coastline. Right. <laughs> Doesn't matter if I'm the kingdom of Italy, like, what, the Venice, the Ve Venetian shipbuilding? No, that doesn't exist. In uh, yeah, so Royal Court is out. Um, yeah, I'm, I have the achievement list pulled up here, so we will be talking about that a little bit. Certainly not exclusive. We've all played it. I've got two it. of the achievements already. <laughs> which, which two? Um, the first one, patronage, and then oh, good lord, let's see that one. Uh, they belong in a museum. I got. Uh, I I wasn't playing on Iron Man, but uh, polyglot, no ten language. I got a character up to fourteen. Damn. That's the <laughs> Technically 15 if you count her native language. Spoke 15. You need a very high learning stat for that, but... Uh, yeah, I think it might be easier to do that over on a run in India or something. It was in India, yeah. It would be hard to do in Western Europe because there just aren't mm -hmm. that many languages. Uh, yep. I'm currently trying to do the true royal court. Currently, I as the queen of Sardinia, or actually I'm a king, yeah, the king of Sardinia, we have a court the same level as the entire HRE. <laughs> nice. Nice. So, yeah. th this is something that I found very strange in my playthrough. I did uh, run as um, Robert the Fox, um, so obviously he doesn't start with a court. Mm -hmm. uh, but as soon as I became a kingdom, I set every one of those little buttons for court grandeur stuff, like, you know, yeah. Beautiful food and all like whatever. I put it all up to maximum because it cost only like three ducats a month, which is nothing. Um and within about a year I had the second most grand court in the world. Mm -hmm. Um and I was still pretty tiny. I could have just um, you know, submit myself to the uh, not the Byzantines because they were in first. Uh, I could have submitted myself to the Holy Roman Empire and then instantly I, I've got that achievement. It seems like a ridiculously easy achievement to achieve. I feel like they're going to tweak the amount of money you have to spend for that. <laughs> yeah, they have to, because it's, it's just, there's no it, reason to not have it on max. Does it scale to your court size? Because for, for my game I'm playing right now, to have everything at max costs like 14, 15 ducats. It must scale somewhere. Yeah, I don't. Um, I have no idea like, how you were getting all of that for. Th yeah, yeah, I got up to court grandeur level eight. I think it was. I was like at seventy-five, um, a hundred, and it was just. It wasn't going down. It was just. It was just stable. I was there yep. with like a completely empty court, de devoid of artifacts. But my dude was sitting in absolute luxury. Probably had a really nice pillow. Uh, Agmund is saying it scales to realm size. Okay, that just, makes sense. And, just be a little kingdom then. Yeah, wee little kingdom. Also, if you are a learning court, 
you get so many people with inspirations. Yeah. The, yeah. the playthrough I recorded for YouTube, like, I played through three rulers in that playthrough. Three. We had excess of everything. I was only missing two of, like, the small things, like the animal pelts. And that's just because I wasn't requesting them. <laughs> like, yeah, the, for some reason, those are, like, the hardest to get. The small wall mm-hmm. hanging. It's like if, yep. if your cat dies, you can skin your cat. But it's like, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> that's, that's so morbid. Well, I mean, if you're Dead. going for the... Which achievement is it? Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's one for having, like, every every inventory slot. Slot filled. Mm-hmm. Oh, one of a kind. Obtain an epic artifact from an adventure inspiration. If I had, if we had been able to play with achievements with the pre-release, I'd have that one already. <laughs> it's strange. I remember other pre-release. Um, I think even CK three pre-release. We were we able to get, get achievements. achievements. Yeah, and I, now I'm not sure why we weren't able to do it with this. Something about it changed the checksum. It was more like a mod or something. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Um. <sighs> Yeah, uh, what what runs have you done so far, Rose? Um, I did the one for you two. I did some messing around. I can't really talk about. Uh, and then pre-release stream on Monday, we were playing down in Ga- was Ghana in Africa. That was getting messy. <laughs> oh, yeah. We every because of course everyone's a different religion, so no one wants to ally me, but they all kept allying each other even though they were different religions. It was really frustrating with AI being AI. <laughs> One of the things and I then, yeah, I love about the new culture system is that in places like West Africa, where it used to just feel like I can click anywhere and it's gonna be kind of the same campaign. Now because they all have different cultural tenets, like I have a better idea of like, okay. These, mm-hmm. you know, the these tribes are like this, and these tribes are like, and actually decide who I want to play based on that, and not just on which which religion I want. Yeah, I also had an issue. I don't know if anyone else, but anyone who watched my stream last night will understand the frustration because we were all getting frustrated. We were played at we started as Matilda of Tuscany in the HRE. And, of course, I'm trying to get a kingdom so I can have my own royal court. We had conquered, like, 12 of the 15 counties we needed for Italy. When suddenly, boom, the kingdom of Italy was formed. And every piece of land I owned in Italy that was personally mine, outside of the Duchy of Tuscany, was given to this kingdom of Italy. And all it said was, I lost the counties. Just a little banner pop-up. Bit rude Hmm. looking like. And then it happened again and again. At first I thought it was total exclave. And I realized, and so I re-restarted with significant instead, which means you're fine, but it, it only happens on the ruler death. I never died and I had it happening. Yeah, there's still, was... some, there's still some weird stuff too with like, if you're an emperor... And you have, like, Saxon elective or Tanistry, and then you have multiple sub-kingdoms under that that also use Saxon elective or Tanistry. When you die, it's just... It just feels completely random. It's like, I don't know what it's gonna look like. It doesn't even matter if they all have the same elective air. It's like, it's just gonna split up my shit in whatever way it wants to. Like, I, Mm -hmm. I, like... I've gotten to the point where, like, I don't want to use the elective succession types once I get to the Emperor tier, just because I don't know if it's a bug, I don't know if that's how it's supposed to work, but it just seems like absolute chaos. Uh, Well, we had a crusade actually win yesterday, which is the first time I've seen that in a long time. But, and I was number one, I was winning the crusade. And then I died right before the crusade ended, and suddenly we didn't. My my chosen ruler, my beneficiary, didn't get on the throne. Oh, that sucks. Yeah. I was like, what? Why should it reset your beneficiary if you... Yeah. Like, it was literally seconds. Uh, yeah, s- succession still has some issues. Um... Um... <laughs> <laughs> Lambert, who have you played as so far? With uh, just just Robert the Fox. Um, mm-hmm. I was um, I'm planning on doing a run 
as the Piasts in uh, uh, 867. There is a, an achievement, uh, Brave and the Bold, you've got on screen. Um, and uh, it seems like a pretty fun run. There's a few achievements you can get with it. So that's going to be my planned um, YouTube run. Uh, but I'm not looking forward to the amount of editing that I now have yeah, signed up yeah. to do with my videos. That's going to... Uh, yay, fun. <laughs> Yeah, I've thought about doing something similar where, like, start as the, the Magyars and found Hungary and try to not out expand at all outside of de jure Hungary, but just make Hungary the best kingdom that I can. Mm -hmm. um, and just I feel like Royal Court encourages us to play tall. Right. Yeah. Which I is what yeah, CK needs. You're, you're... Well, like like Agamede says uh, in chat, like, the, the court expenses scales to your realm size mm -hmm. so just play tall as fuck um it's like oh yeah i i am i am the most powerful country in the world but i have not expanded that very much so my court expenses are real small yeah. well the youtube run i did I, when i played as sardinian corsica it was i ended up becoming sardinian culture and then i hybrid i not hybridized i uh, diverged and i added the Pillar? It's called Pillar, right? Whatever it is. I added the, whatchamacallit, so we were a mercantile nation. I, f I forgot what it's called. But basically, we could build trade ports before we get the next technology. So we were building a s technology ahead. And every county in that kingdom is on the coast. Yeah, that one is really strong. It's really, really strong. So um, much money. It's ridiculous. The one thing about so like playing tall in in CK three in like royal court obviously plays really well with that, but it makes me really bummed that you can't do it as a duke, um, because yeah. like that just seems like that would be really a really fun playstyle to just be a super duke inside of France or inside of the HRE or something, mm -hmm. and like you could just focus on your court and making your duchy really powerful. Um, I've heard some rumors that they maybe did this for performance. Uh, there was a discussion going on on Reddit about how, like, how would you determine which do have a court and which don't? Is it on prestige, whatever? Um, or being a double duke. My solution to this, which I have put about 30 seconds of thought into, so maybe it wouldn't work. I don't want to backseat game develop. Um, there is a law that you can get as a vassal uh, called uh, Palatinate, where you become basically a, a Palatine, which is like Duke Plus. Um, maybe they could have a court. So then if I want to stay small, if I want to stay a Duke, like do all of my behind-the-throne scheming and politics and all uh, I just force my liege to make me a Palatinate, and then I can have my own. That might be. I'm sold. I like it. Yeah. Because not could... a lot of people, especially the AI, they don't really ask for that. So it'd be something mostly players would. Or just play the inevitable Dukes Get Courts mod. Yeah. <laughs> That's going to be a thing very I'll, shortly. I'll be curious oh, to sure. see if it wrecks performance. <laughs> like, cause if what I will say uh, is. Uh, sorry, go on. If that's the reason that they, they made it so Dukes don't get courts because it wrecks performance. That's an understandable reason to not give every dude. Yeah, I will say when uh, my my PC was having some trouble. Oh, Agnides is uh, already before. a thing. Yeah, I thought it would be. My PC was having some troubles before. Um, it's fine now because I factory reset it. Uh, but it did chug a lot uh, the first few times I went into a, a court. Um, which is like kind of the reason that I was like, oh, maybe maybe some issues are happening here. Should just reset <laughs> everything. Um, but yeah, I, I would not be surprised if it was due to performance. Yeah. Yeah. That, uh, makes, that makes sense, sense to me. Yeah. So I have done... Let's see, I did Nepal, which is actually one of my favorite starts in K3. And uh, I just formed the Kingdom of Himalaya and uh, didn't really expand much beyond that and built a bunch of monasteries. Um, and I, I I went back to Ireland. I didn't go back to the the uh, the uh, 
uh, the O'Briens this time. I made my own dynasty with my own shields and my own religion and <laughs> culture in Ireland. Gaelic Empire basically stealing all the good Ooh. cultural tenets from the Vikings so I could use like the Norse men at arms, which are like stupidly powerful in the early. Yeah. Uh, having pastoralism and the trade port the merchant fleet one or whatever. Yeah, I would think that would be wonderful with Ireland yeah. just because there's so much coast. Right. So all of my coastal provinces had upgraded economic buildings and all of my inland provinces <laughs> had upgraded economic buildings. Like, you get a new slot for a cultural tenant every era. So, mm -hmm. by the time you're in, like, the late medieval era, you could make some super overpowered cultures. Like, you could you could make some pretty ridiculous. Really, like. Um, yeah. And, uh, what else? Oh, I tried... I tried a run where I, uh, tried to play as Bohemia and stay pagan and <laughs> but it's just like you still have to conquer so much stuff to reform religion I, I, I don't know. yeah same yeah. like if I am if I am the king of Bohemia and I'm a pagan and I want to become feudal I should not have to conquer like half of the Slavic speaking world <laughs> in order to do that yeah that's yeah. that's a reason like outside of a few times in CK like in CK2, if I started as a Norse over in the UK, I eventually planned on becoming Catholic or some other organized religion because I didn't want to go back and conquer all of Scandinavia yeah. just yeah. to be able to reform my religion. Yeah. Or I'd grab those counties, reform, and then just release and be like, have fun, guys. <laughs> oh, the, the best part of the, the DLC, the update... Uh, that we haven't talked about yet, is the phenomenal customization you can do to your flag. You can change your map color with, like, yes. all 17,000 colors or whatever the fuck it is. Uh, so much customization, and uh, I don't need to click, freaking click randomize on on a f on bloody uh, flag a thousand times. I can just I can get my white dragon on a red background <laughs> Every single time, no problem. Achieve yeah, you've got like two dragon on. choices. Three, in fact. Three? One of them's uh, Chinese dragon, so it doesn't count. But yeah, yeah no. That's, that's why I didn't include actually, it. There's one dragon, you. the Chinese dragon, and there's two wivens. Um, mm -hmm. there's, there's actually no European dragons, which is a big, big shit. Actually, no, no, there's the Welsh dragons there. So tell a lie. There's one dragon, two wivens, and a Chinese dragon. You should. Uh... Spoiled for choice. To just make an Anglo Han empire and do the the white background or the red background with the white Chinese. Dress. If if when when I play um like EU four and China like I'd love to be able to do that. Yeah. Or uh, just like that would be add China to the game for CK three. <laughs> I, I mean, we do have a Chinese dragon. That would be yeah. a really interesting challenge is like to start somewhere in western europe and like your goal is to form a, a hybrid culture with han which is like yeah. okay i need to get over there before they're you know wiped out by the tanguts and the mongols because often like <laughs> one or two hundred years in there aren't any han provinces left on the map or mm -hmm. they've been hybridized with another culture i, I do see the ai forming hybrid cultures fairly often um, and some yes. of them have unique names, which is like some of the ones that you might not have heard of, but did exist historically. Where I like went is like would say, you know, they've created the hybrid culture, or whatever, from the the Tibetan and Yongic cultures, and it's called this. And I'm like, okay, well, that clearly wasn't procedurally <laughs> generated, so I'm gonna look yeah. this up. And then it's like, oh, that was those were real. Uh, that was a real thing. Like, I think Kazakh is one of the ones that can rise. Um, yeah. Persian and Turkic in certain areas. Um, like, no guy. A lot of the, like, step cultures that, that existed come to. Tajik or another one. That... Yeah. 
Um, I'm I'm really enjoying it. I think it's like the best kind of expansion. It's like Way of Life, which was one of my yes. favorite expansions for CK2, where it just makes the game you know kind of better for not everybody, for everyone because dukes don't well, get access to it and tribal rulers don't get access. They get the culture stuff. Well, yeah. I mean, even if well, even if you're a vassal duke, you get access to being able to pay homage, which That's can true. go terribly wrong. You can petition your leader. Which, uh, that's also really just a nice way to farm a uh, dynasty. Yeah. Right now. It's like, mm -hmm. people will just come and, and like, kneel before you, and it's like, yep, I'll take it. Thanks for the free renown. <laughs> <laughs> it's not gonna change my opinion of you at all, because I'm a human player, and if I want you dead, I just want you dead, but... Uh, thank you anyway. <laughs> yeah. That would be interesting if... There's not a mechanic already um, there where it's harder to execute. In my opinion. It feels like there should be. It's like EU4 has I, I, I just give you stress, I guess. Yeah, like, right. Yeah. Or like EU4, you, you take a stability hit if you declare war on someone you have good relations with, so like... The AI building up relations with you actually totally pointless. The, the annoying part about that, though, is um, you just need to send them an insult because it's the wrong way around. Yeah, it cares if the, you have a good opinion of me, so I lose the stability by declaring war on you. Mate, I don't give a fuck if you like me. You're dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um. Well, uh, any other thoughts on royal court? Um, I would love to see how they adapt it. Like if they add republics and yeah, well, and and also like I was talking on Reddit about pretty sure the reason that tribals don't get this is because they want tribals to have their own version of this eventually. Mm hmm. I think we discussed that on here. Yeah, a few months ago. Because like if I'm if I'm the Mongols or if I'm like a Viking war leader, you know, I want mm -hmm. my court to be about. Drinking and fighting and like handing out <laughs> treasure to my warriors, like it shouldn't mm -hmm. really be about who has the best fashion or the nicest uh, footstool. <laughs> it should be different. Events. You don't care. Yeah, yeah. You you don't care about the same things if you're a tribal ruler. Yeah, it shouldn't just be the royal court, but there's some furs on the wall. That wouldn't <laughs> that wouldn't be very cool. So. Um, I think one thing that maybe needs to be mentioned is uh, on Steam it is at 50% positive reviews. It is decisively in the mixed category. Yeah, and, uh, uh, but, and a lot of the complaints that I've seen are based on price. Right. It's the most, Yeah, it is pricey. I think it's the most expensive Paradox DLC ever at $30. Um, which, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm sure it has a lot to do with the art that went into it. Yep. Probably the most 3D art that they've ever had to do for an expansion. Um, it's something that Paradox has never done before, is this level of 3D modeling. Right. right. I mean, and I, you know, I get it. Like, that is, $30 is pretty expensive for, for a deal. I think yeah. it's, I think you are getting a lot for, for your money. Um, I also totally, I, I sympathize with people who are kind of miffed by the price. I do think that there's a lot of just at this point, like, tired and exhausting makes me roll my eyes, kind of uh, <laughs> over the top. This paradox such a money-grubbing uh, yeah. fucking... They've obviously stuff. never played The Sims. <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah, it's... Which is coming yeah. out with a, a game pack. Actually, do you know what The Sims has done for the past, like, nine months? You could be annoyed the only both. expansions <laughs> they've put out have been kits, which are these yeah. $5 overpriced little things that Right. Like five new outfits <sighs> and like some furniture. Yeah. So mm. Personally, I don't think like while I I my overall opinion of the DLC and patch is if you like CK three already, you are going to like the DLC. It is not good yes. to convert somebody right. to liking the game who doesn't already though. Um, yeah. and the price is about double what I think is reasonable. 
I would say like twenty bucks is is like what would oh, yeah, be I would, I would, deal price. Yeah, I would have thought twenty for this DLC, not thirty. Twenty twenty five is pushing it, thirty is kind of yeah, I can see why people. There's well, also a lot of negative reviews in Spanish because apparently the Spanish localization is doesn't exist, um, <laughs> which I don't really see a good excuse for that when they had so long to work on it. Yeah, um, I think it's really good. I understand why some people are miffed with the price, but I also like. When I see comments that are like, it's, this is just they're chopping up games these days and selling them to us in pieces for $50 each, I'm just like, come on. It's not 2003. I, yeah. I don't to be mad <laughs> Um, yeah. As uh, Serion is saying, it's close to buying an expansion to a game, not a DLC. And I would have to say that it is more an expansion than what we think of as yeah. DLC nowadays. Right. Like, it's more like an old-school expansion. Exactly. Yeah, so... Northern yeah, Lords was a DLC. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, and it's fair to say, like, full disclosure, like, that we get this for free, so yeah, I've had people tell me, you know, well, you're biased because you don't, you know, you didn't have to pay for it, and it's like, I mean, I could, I could see that argument, I'll be upfront about that. But I still would have bought it if I wasn't. I mean, I would have, uh, see, Crusader Kings 3, Crusader Kings is my favorite game series, period. So, of course, I would have mm -hmm. bought it. Like, you know. Yeah. I would have bought it hands down. No. Yeah. I uh, think, I generally don't pass any comments on whether a DLC is worth it or not. I, I, because, like I said, I've, I've got the Paradox DLCs and stuff for free for a while now, so I, mm. I, Except that I don't know, right? Is yeah. is it mm -hmm. worth it or not? I don't know. I got it for free. I didn't have to pay, spend my own money on it. But um, I think it's it's a bit more acceptable when I look at a price and be like, oh, yeah, no, that's a bit steep, mate. That it, rather than oh yeah, it's totally worth it. Like I didn't pay for it. So how do I how how can I make that? Yeah, I I feel like it's call? too steep. I but I I can also say I feel like it's too steep. But I still would have paid for it if I didn't get the game for free. Right. Yeah. I'd have probably like, looked at getting a discount somewhere. Mm. Like waiting for a sale would probably would be what I would do. I, I wouldn't have been able to. Just go raid your demons. I might have told myself to do that, but I would have been buying it within just, watching like one video or yeah, one yeah, stream. Yeah, that's, that's fair. Just that's just fair. click just click raise raise all as as raiders and then just go over to the next province, take their money, spend it on DLC. You know, mm -hmm. that, mm. that easy. What, you you don't have you don't have a, a raiding a band of raiders. That, well, that's I, that sounds like a you problem. You should get more. <laughs> I got my son. Yeah, that'd be all right. Uh, that'd be one. <laughs> uh, also, you... our next door neighbor is like really old, so it'd be really easy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, although you know, based on CK three, Finland doesn't really have a lot. Like, if you go raiding in Finland, <laughs> there's not a lot to deal. It's a lot. Yeah, of, a lot. A lot's changed in the past. Yeah. Fucking twelve hundred years ago. <laughs> really, I thought it was still just like reindeer and trees. I mean, a hundred years ago, you'd have been right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yes, I'm. I'm endorsing uh, raiding. Uh, yeah, pillaging and uh, despoiling the countryside. Podcast. Yeah, that's all. Podcast cancelled. Yeah. I don't think there's anything in the Twitch TOS that says I, I, I can't advocate pillaging. Mm. They never specifically said that. I mean, unless pillaging is expressly forbidden in, like, the laws of, of you know, the country that Twitch is based in, then, you know, I think you're in the clear. Yeah. Probably. I would I assume. I don't think there's any laws in the book specifically against pillaging in the... <laughs> I'd have to I'd have to get DM my friend DM Schmeyer on here. Is there any he's an actual lawyer. Is there anything in the uh, the US Code of Criminal Justice specifically that prohibits pillaging? Um oh, yeah. <laughs> disclaimer this is not legal advice. I no. don't <laughs> think so. Yeah. I, w I wonder if there's any state laws. That's where you gotta be careful. That probably is in, in British law, because, like, the, the time the pillaging was going yeah. on. Well, there's, is, is yeah, pretty, you know, makes sense. We existed back then. 
Um, <laughs> yeah, well, that's for sure with Americans. There's still, I mean, we have laws against piracy that go back to like the 1600s, 1700s. But, uh, America's obsession with with boats. The amount of uh, wars you've gone to based on something happening to a boat <laughs> yeah. is a bit fucking insane. I'm not gonna lie. Especially, you know, if just oh. it was like a boat caught on fire, but we're gonna say the Spanish did it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or just pretend that a, sh a boat got shot at, yeah. and and then you yeah. know go to Asia well, for I mean, a while. Did that kind of all start with like the War of eighteen twelve when you know British people were stopping our boats and stealing sailors? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Although <laughs> that was more about you wanting to conquer Canada, which you failed to do. So I mean, that's why you lost. That no, one. that's not. <laughs> that's for the cool. common person, that was not the reason to go to war. Um. The right. common person lived inland. Before we uh, plunge the podcast into another civil war. Not uh, at that point. The war of 2022. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, other than CK3, Rose, what, what else have you been up to lately and where can people find you? Uh, pretty much just CK3. <laughs> All right. Well, Fair enough. Uh, where can they find all of you? Uh, I'm just... YouTube, I'm going to try and do weekly videos, and then Twitch. Twitch, I've been streaming every night so far this week. We'll see how long I can keep it up. <laughs> oh. Uh, I even plan to stream tonight. What about you, Lambert? What, uh, what else have you been up to? Um, well, I've been playing and Banal multiplayer uh, every Thursday on Twitch, and I have been editing those videos and <laughs> oh boy ain't that a soul crushing experience um but it pays off with views because each video is like getting a thousand views in under 24 hours and it's gone on for like 21 videos now uh so that's pretty cool um but it does mean that the amount of videos i actually put on the channel is like a quarter of what it was two months ago mm -hmm. uh so make less money but the video, the, the channel quality is higher, which is nice. I just wish I made more money on those to make it worth it. Well, maybe, maybe uh, people will be more willing to sign up for your Patreon. With yeah, your better I mean, quality I've videos. The most late, latest videos. I haven't. I don't know, let's check the email. Has anything happened? Nope. Just be, um, be like Chewy Shoot and uh, really, really push your Patreon. Just he really uh, sells those. This version of the. Uh, uh, stream pack that Laura sent me does not have the end screen on it for some reason <laughs> with all of our tags. Uh, but so just can, blame can, it on the fact he was, you know, running across the countryside chasing a horse while yeah, he sent it to you. Get those in chat and the show notes. <laughs> um, yeah, um, a lot of a yeah. lot of editing. It's like almost every day now. I've just been just editing like mm -hmm. four or five hours a day. So that's. Yeah, it's not fun, but you know, I think it's going to pay off in the long run. Hopefully. I hope so, yeah. More patience for it than I Yeah. It's not patience, it's determination. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, I might stream some K3 um, hey. on twitch.tv slash mm. I haven't streamed in a very long time. I have some ideas I'd like to do. Also, might want to later this month stream some Elden Ring. Yeah. Um. Uh. Yeah. You can find my CK3 Royal Court review on IGN. Um. I have another review for another game. You could maybe guess going up next week. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. Uh, mm. yeah, I don't know what's coming out next week that. You know, strategy players would be excited about. Uh, Peggle, Peggle, Peggle 2, Peggle 3. Who knows? knows what you could possibly be discussing next uh, week? Yeah, I also I, I uh, put up a preview of uh, Warhammer 40k Demon Hunters. It looks really cool. It's like XCOM. With... I've seen people make that um, comparison quite a lot. I've yeah. got to look into that because yeah. that sounds like pretty cool. It looks dope, really good. Actually. Like these days, when I hear there's a new Warhammer 40k game coming out, I'm like, eh, it's probably gonna be a yeah. best. <laughs> like, but then this one actually looks really good, both gameplay wise and. 
also like it what you like to have when you play XCOM is like the people you start the game with kind of go through the end because they just get better over time. And you know, you can get like in XCOM in the light game, you do get your dudes shot, but it doesn't hurt that much, which always kind of like they still look like humans, they're still you know, the, the face is exposed, they get shot in the face and dead, but it never happens because you reload all the time, uh, to make it not happen. But like with a, with if you if you're going through with blue people in power armor, some space marines, not star space marines, um, then it makes sense that you know they can take a hit because the freaking tanks yeah. are two hearts. Yep, exactly. Um, I like the way they do it too. Or like if you get you get quote unquote killed, you can still be revived by a teammate as long as you don't take any damage after that. Kind of like. As long as you have someone there to pick you back up, you're okay. Makes sense. Yeah. Get your yeah. carry involved. Um, check out the podcast on all the places that have podcasts, such as Spotify, SoundCloud. Uh, we're on iTunes. We're on whatever. YouTube. Uh, YouTube. There is a link tree in the chat. We're up to date. No. We're back on track with getting stuff on the feed. <laughs> So YouTube goes up 24 hours after Twitch, and everywhere else goes about 24 to 48 hours yeah, after. By, by Friday night is generally the deadline that for me. Friday night mm-hmm. US time might be Saturday morning if you're in your... It'll be done earlier this time, because we didn't have Loris, and he won't forget to give you a ring. <laughs> <laughs> he, has, he has been better about that, but uh, yeah. Um, anyway, uh, we'll be back next week with um, probably... A, a lot of talk about a game that's coming out next week that you can probably guess. Um, <laughs> and uh, we'll see you then. Bye, Bye. everyone.